Oh yeah, man. So first of all, he gonna proud. So I'm 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 a, tell a, uh, tell a, I'm gonna I'm 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 open the the curtain up real quick. So I, I'm sitting up here showing my man lavish how to work this this Insta 360. So he gonna put he gonna find a way to put some footage in here. If I'm a good enough teacher, he gonna find a way to put some footage in here. But my man lavish he came met me out here on my way. Uh, I was coming in Detroit. Came at me, we got a couple of miles in, you know what I'm saying? Hey man, it's your, uh, it's your man GQ, AKA Just GQ. All right, cool, man. What got you in Detroit right now? Um, Just riding, uh, sitting up here, left Harley Davidson homecoming um, a couple of days ago and decided to just keep on riding, went up to Green Bay, looped around the, uh, what they say, the, the UP and I uh, rode the tunnel of trees and I figured I might as well stop in Detroit for a day or so, man, and, and get with the folks out there, you know what I'm saying? What up, though? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, man. GQ, man, I've been watching you, man, for uh, quite some time. Met you through a uh, big sale or whatnot, and we both doing the same thing, doing um, videos and capturing a lot of stuff going on on the bike set, man. What got you into um, this whole motorcycle thing? From just in general, just like riding or like what? Yeah, just just riding, man. And, and when I say riding, what got you into hopping on this motorcycle, wanting to go across the country? Uh, I guess it's just it's just in me. Like the exploration aspect is something that uh, always intrigued me. I always wanted to know. I always question stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like. And then coming up in the bike world, the motorcycle world, the motorcycle club world, it's a lot of information that gets passed down. And a lot of it's true, a lot of it's false. You know what I'm saying? Just, just being real. And so for me, uh, being in the education field, I got a thirst and a quest for knowledge. So I'm like, well, I want to see for myself. So I started getting out and people say, oh, you got to do this or you got to go here. Or you got to check in with this person. You got to do this. You got to do that. And I'm just like... Man, I'm about to go see. And uh, that kind of like kicked it off. And uh, I went to a few rallies that was close to my area for the people that don't, that don't know. Um, New Orleans based, born and raised. And you got Lone Star Rally and you got uh, Daytona that's kind of like in the area as far as rallies. And I went to my first rally, Lone Star, and I was like, man, my mind was blown. Just, I didn't even know people did stuff like that on the bike, uh, in the bike world. And so uh, I bring those stories back home to people and you know, they looking at me like, you talking crazy, like this this Chinese arithmetic, like what, what is you talking about? Like this don't even make sense. And uh, I was like, well, I'm gonna I'm show y'all, but not gonna tell y'all. So I started recording and then bringing back me like, oh, it's dope. And so when I would bring the, uh, the, the footage back, you know, people became more and more interesting. So that kind of just had me just start going out a little further and a little further and uh, going to see more and more things that's just out there in general that people either didn't go to or they didn't know about. Okay, man. And in this journey, man, one of the most important things that I need you to share, man, coming from your perspective, is how much does it cost to travel like you travel, man? I think people forget about that. Um... You gotta have your money right. And cost is subjective. Like, a lot of people spend money on frivolous stuff. And for me, this ain't something that's just like frivolous. Like, I don't, I don't smoke, I don't drink for the people who don't know. Um, so I got money to do stuff, you know, that I like to do. Traveling on my motorcycle is one of them. Uh, but if your your money not right, your your household not not right, if you got kids, if your kids not taken care of, this is something that will really, really, really disrupt that whole situation that you got going on at home if you don't have it have it together. So, um, what I tell people, if you want to do it, you can do it, but you got to plan it. And it's not like everything just pops up in front of us like last minute. You know when the big rallies are. You know when. The, the kings of the south and the, the rare breeze and the, the pound for pounds and the next levels and all. You know, you know what you know when these events are. Like years or months at least, at least a year in advance. 
So if it's something that you want to do, and it's a couple of states away, a couple of hours away, put your money up. It's like nothing else. Like if you want to go take a trip, you want to go ride somewhere, start saving up your money. Riding season going to be over for, for some people who live in the northern states or whatever. That's the time. Go and stack your money. You know when riding season kick off, I'm going to hit X, Y, Z, A, B, C, and you got the funds to do so. General, con general, general spending. <laughs> Basic trip, five hundred thousand. So I'm gonna tell you like this. I spent roughly eight hundred in gas going to the West Coast and back. So roughly about four hundred each way. Um. Of course, it gets more and more expensive as you, the further you go west. Um, some some gas pumps you paying six dollars and ninety nine cent for premium, you know. So you think about that, that's seven dollars pretty much. We got six gallon tanks. You could do the math. You know what I'm saying? That's a big, big, big chunk. A couple of years ago, you could drop a hot twenty in there. You good like that? Twenty ain't getting it no more. You need twenty five, thirty, thirty five per tank. Um, but 800 in gas, uh, I always like pick up little things on the trip. Like I'm a, I'm a gift person. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big patch person. I'm huge with patches. I love putting patches on my, uh, my jacket and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I wish we would have started this. And you can cut this out. But I wish I would have put my jacket on before we started this. You know what I'm saying? But anyway. No, um, we got to go get it, man. What you talking about? You gonna start all the way over? No, we gonna pick it back up. Yeah, man, I had to, had to run to get my uh my jacket real quick, man. I had to get my jacket. So I was talking about uh, you know, some of the um the stuff I like to get on my trips, going back to the uh the cost piece. And one of the things I like to get, and I'm really proud of, is like just getting patches. Um all of my patches signify a place that I've been or accomplishment that uh, I did while riding. So I've got, you know, basic stuff like, I'm, I'm saying basic. This ain't to crap on nobody, put down nobody. I'm just saying in general. Um, Tale of the Dragon, Heart of Davidson Museum, a couple of rallies I done been through, like Bikes, Blues, and Barbecue, Mile Mark Zero, all my hog stuff, Pig Trail, Sturgis, Canada, Los Gypsies and stuff like that. And um, of course, you know what I'm saying, Peace Army Patch, uh, Saddle Sword stuff, pins and, you know, just things like that. Man, shout out to to the people on the set doing it big, you know what I'm saying. Uh, my man with On Ground Clothing, Rod, C Rider with Major Hog League, you feel me? You know what I'm saying, putting on for the culture. No, man, that's cool, man. Let's talk about this Peace Army, man. Okay. What's, what's the Peace Army? The Peace Arm is a collection of individuals who engage each other with peace, love, and joy. Like, that's the, the basic core principles of, like, the Peace Arm. And this goes back to the whole thing about the misinformation um, that people like to spread in this motorcycle community, this motorcycle world. Uh, and a lot of it was, was um, when, you, when you, you've been in places where certain people will come around or they'll tell you don't go uh, as a biker to certain events and stuff like that because you may not be welcome or whatever the case may be. And I'm just like, man, look, if I come around and if I'm giving off a, a vibe of just like peace, um, I'm laughing with people, you know what I'm saying? That's that joy, you know what I'm saying? I'm showing love to different kind of people, you know what I'm saying? In different ways, whether it's me, you know what I'm saying? Going and greet somebody, uh, old school, you know, type way, like bringing a, a, a bottle to the bar of a club I ain't never been to, you know what I'm saying, meeting people on the highway, like that, that love, like if you lead with those three things, like you're going to be good no matter what, but certain people will tell you no matter what you do, like it's always going to be some type of like negative stuff going on, I want to just change that and show people that it's way bigger than that. You know what I'm saying? So that's what the peace song is pretty much about. Okay, and I see it's the peace symbol and a number one. Yes, sir. With the helmet. 
Yeah. Any elaboration on how that came about? Man, I, I'm gonna keep it a buck. So that design, which is right here too, uh, my favorite number is number one, obviously. Like that's just my favorite number, uh, cause it's it's always a start of something. One, um, but the the Harley number one skull, like that that logo with the uh, it's like the Harley one when there's a skull inside of it. That was my favorite. Harley logo, and when I was like trying to figure out stuff that I wanted to do for my own brand and my own channel, I'm like, well, I can't use that. Like, even though it's on my bike, it's on multiple things I put on. I was like, I can't use it. That's gonna be copyright infringement. I'm not trying to have Harley come back and sue me or nothing like that. So, uh, I just used a silhouette of a number one, and then came out with my own thing. I always wore black helmets. I love black motorcycles. I think. Riding a black motorcycle is super classic, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's black and chrome, whether it's blacked out, it's just a good looking bike. Um, so, of course, my helmet is black and uh, it's just a representation of me. But it's also a representation of everybody who uh, aligns with the stuff that I align with, that whole peace, love and joy thing. So I got the helmet. The helmet signifies the travel aspect. It signifies the motorcycle. But I wanted to throw the peace sign in there because one... It literally, it means so many things to me. So it means like peace, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's up, bro? Like, I'm, I'm, it's a greeting, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, I can see you over there and I can throw up the deuce, you know what I'm saying? I can throw up that peace sign and uh, it's a symbol of greeting. But it's also, you know, my, my, my symbol of travel as well. So it's like, man, peace out. Like, I'm about to dip, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's a certain duality in it, you know what I'm saying? So it's like me greeting you and it's also me leaving you. You know what I'm saying? So I combined both of them together, and that's what I came up with. All right, man, that's dope, man. You say that you go out and you travel to different places. People tell you you shouldn't go. Mm -hmm. Now, you went to Sturgis. Mm -hmm. um, did you get any, uh, I won't say backlash, but did you get any you shouldn't go there or don't go to Sturgis? Look, it's a lot of people, and, and rightfully so, I'm never going to discount anybody's uh, experiences, right? So... At one point in time, there have been people who have uh, experienced certain things going in certain places and places like Sturgis or whatever. And what happens is the information gets passed down to other people. It's like, oh, nah, you shouldn't go there. You shouldn't be there. And for me, you know, hearing these stories, like, it's, it's come down from, like, you know, old folks, older guys, OGs and stuff like that. And it's like, well, I... On my quest for knowledge, I want to go see it and check it out for myself. And uh, I think that expanding your mind in this bike community is, is like huge for, for our growth in general. So went out there, had a great time, had a blast. And that's not to say, you know, everything is going to be peaches and cream everywhere you go and you thinking everything's going to be hunky dory because it's not. But once again, if you carrying yourself with a certain, you know, demeanor, a certain aura, whatever the case may be generally things be good and if not peace out you know what i'm saying you going about your business you ain't got to stay there but uh i just want to show people like you know it's okay for you to get out there and just see just go see stuff for yourself you know what i'm saying now, how was sturgis to you personally i had a blast like i mean the the people i met was cool um the one of the uh the bar owners i met gave me a, a whole tour and history about the bar and all that good stuff like it was it was real chill. I met some people out there like to this day, you know, and that was just last year. And every, anytime I come out there, like I'm good, I got a place to stay, you know, like everything is, is just love, you know. But once again, if you if you put that into the atmosphere, like 90% of the time, you're going to get that right back. Okay, that's cool. Now, I watched your journey, um, your travels mm -hmm. uh, from going from Louisiana um, all over uh, the country, man. What was probably one of your memorable uh, journeys, trips, rides? Okay, I'm going to pause right here. Sit on this side because I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to look at you on this side. I'm crossing, I'm crossing the camera, but no, I was I'm used to you. So you want me to look this way? Yeah. Okay, because I'm looking straight like this because yeah. you was, that's how it was, but I'm over here. Yeah. All right. Uh, repeat the question again. 
out of all the uh, trips and the journeys that you did and you done made, what would probably what would be your most memorable uh, ride? Um, uh, my most memorable ride will always be the first time I went to California. Like that, uh, pro mainly because that was. Um, I've never been there, one, but two, it was a couple of months after my mom passed away and we talked about going on a trip and me riding in California and stuff like that. And so when I actually got a chance to do it, my mom passed away that February, I went out there that June and I broke down at the you know, California State Sign, you know what I'm saying, started crying because it was like, man, I told you I was going to do this. Like I, I'm fulfilling the things that we had talked about, and uh, that really kicked off me just having this sense of, um, you know, live every day like it should last. Like take the trip, take the time off. You know, at the end of the day, you a number to a company that you working for. A lot of people get caught up on the well. I don't have the time. I got the work. I got the work. I got the work. I got the work. If you tip over the day you're going to be replaced. And I'm going to say it again. If you tip over the day, if you happen to get sick, fall ill, whatever the case may be, you are going to be replaced. So while you're here, and I think that we take for granted how valuable time is. Like people's time is like super, super valuable. And the older I get, it's like, I'm like, man, if it's not benefiting me, my peace, my pockets, you know, my, my well-being, I ain't got time for it. I ain't got time for nothing that's not benefiting me. Um, and so taking the time to, to, to go on these rides is like huge for me. It's huge for my mental. It's just huge for my personal well-being. And at the end of the day, when my kids grow up and they get, you know, bigger and stuff like that, they can look at their dad and be like, man, like my dad went here. He did this. He did that. It's a it's a video log. It's a, uh, it's photos. It's you know the image of me doing something that I love to do that I can pass on to my kids and they can pass on to their kids. So I think that um, we don't think about that. Just like that, we can be gone like tomorrow. Okay. So that California trip it opened you up. Was that what your first uh, major ride? Uh, yeah, that was my first ride that took more than one day. So, you know, anything, typically anything east of Texas, you can get there roughly about in a day, depending on how you ride. I can ride from New Orleans and get to New York in a day, but I can't ride from here and get to California in a day. So anything that was more than one day is a major, major, major ride. And that was my first major ride going to California. Right now, I know that you said that you broke down when you got to the California State Line, um, you know, just, you know, thinking about your mom. Um, I seen a picture on social media when you was out with some other fellas. Was that, that wasn't California, was it, when you were over looking at um, the mountaintop? Mountaintop. I don't know if that was coming from um, when you was leaving Milwaukee, heading to Sturgis or not. Um, but you had posted a picture um, and you had... Uh, you were embraced by some other guys that rolled with you. Ah, uh, that was um, that was going to Sturgis. Okay. That was going to, that was going to Sturgis. Yeah, I just had a, had another moment like uh, just thinking about moms and stuff like that, and what she would be thinking about right now, and me not being able to Facetime her and show her like this big old statue or show her like this, you know, stuff that we don't see every day. Like when you live in a city, when you live in the bricks was what I call them the bricks. When you get outside of it, you, you start seeing, you know, how how much better mentally you just start feeling because it's always something that's just constantly going in the city, whether it's cars, whether it's people moving around, noises, sounds, just it's it's always go, 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 go. But then you'll get out in the middle of nowhere and you just like, man, it's like peaceful. Like you might just look off in the distance and see some horses or some some bison just like galloping in the distance. I'm serious, man. I seen I pull over, man. We was leaving Sturgis, and uh, we was in Wyoming, and we was just like, man, they got horse, like wild horses, just like out just 
You don't see nothing like that. No city man, you might see. You know, some people got a barn or something. You know what I'm saying? And, and got some some horses in a stable, but just like in the natural element, I thought that was just dope. Like a wild horse, just really just out there getting it. That was that was dope, dog. <laughs> that was dope. No, that's cool, man. So you are a rare breed member. Yes, sir. Uh, how did rare breed? Uh come about for you what made you want to join red breed as a motorcycle club um full transparency i knew nothing about red breed at all um i was in my my former club still cool with them to this day and we came to a crossroads where it's like okay i wanted to just do more riding more getting out more seeing stuff and we were just kind of like butt heads on that aspect and so I, it was just a sense of frustration that set in and I'm just like, you know, agreed to mutually part ways. It's, it's no love lost. I go to the clubhouse all the time. We hang out, still cool with all the members and all that good stuff. But uh I was out riding by myself. Um I don't say all over the country, but you know, within the region, just going to different places here and there. And uh, I would see Rare Breed. Didn't know who they was at first or whatever, but I would see them pull up, had clean bikes. Um, they looked uniform. And I was like, man, them dudes look like, I can, I can tell that they were different when they pulled up. They just looked different. And, uh, you know, that was it at that point. But over the course of like, you know, a year and a half, I kept running into them. Just like, man, these dudes, yeah, these dudes, dudes everywhere and uh what really i guess made the how i really made the connection i was in houston by myself riding and uh one of the members came into a clubhouse that i was in and uh we started talking and he was like real cool dude real cool dude and he was like hey man we getting ready to go to uh second and none clubhouse you want to roll i was like i ain't got nothing to do we rolled, we hung out, and it's like, hey, if you ever in this area, hit me up, so on and so forth. It's like, cool. So hung out, went on about my business. The next morning, I'm heading back to New Orleans, and I'm cruising. You know, I, I ain't know nothing about no breed up and speed up back then. I'm riding, you know, cruise control on, 80. I'm just chilling. It's about 6 in the morning. I look in my rearview mirror. I see a bunch of lights and they was rolling. I said, I ain't know I ain't know it was outlaws or nothing. I was like, man, let me get over real quick. I'm in the right lane. You know, think I mean I'm in the left lane, thinking I'm, you know, going faster than the traffic. I said, all right, let me get back over to the right lane, man. Them dudes came by. Wow. I said, look, I said, oh, that's rare breed. And they was gone. So look. Me being me, look, I hop over back, you know, right behind them. I'm not in their line. Like, I'm not riding with them, but I'm, like, I'm behind them. So I'm really seeing where they're going. So I'm, like, a couple of yards back or whatever, and I'm just riding. They getting it. They pull over. Uh, get some gas. I pull over, too. And so I introduce myself. Hey, you know, I'm GQ, so on and so forth. And uh, we chopped it up for a second. It's like, hey, where y'all going? It's like. He's going back to Huntsville and Birmingham. I'm like, well, shoot, we all going the same way. And he's like, man, she well, like, you know, ride with us. So cool. So uh, we got some gas. And one thing that stood out at that time, they was passing through Louisiana. Not, uh, they was passing through Lake Charles. And a hurricane had just came through. And there was not, no car readers, nothing electronic. was so Everything was cash. All I had was cards. And uh, dude was like, ah, oh, man, you good. Don't worry about it. Hey, look, I, hey, give me some of the money. Boom, boom, boom. So dude collected money, paid for my gas. I'm like, man, look, let me cash app you real quick or whatever. You know, she's like, nah, man, we on the road. That's what we do. I'm like, bet. Like, that's dope. And I ain't never had no interaction like that on the highway. So we ride, we ride, we ride. And then we get to Baton Rouge and take another um, break. So I'm like, look, this going to be our last, you know, stop together because you know i'm right here in new orleans and uh exchange information with the the powers that be you know all them the guys there whatever whatever and i was like well look um i appreciate y'all let me pay y'all back 
It's like, nah, you good. I said, well, when y'all next event is, and uh, I'll support y'all that way. It was like, man, we'll be in Savannah in two weeks. I said, bet I'm going to be there. Sure enough, I pull up to Savannah, seen some of the same guys, called some of the same people. And uh, when I got back, I would say maybe like three, four months later, kept running into him. And I just called the first dude I met in the club. I said, man, what I got to do to get down? And the rest was history. The rest was, the rest history. was history. That's cool, man. So what um what makes what makes Rare Breed stand out uh, from your perspective? Um three things. Bikes clean, boots was shine, and it was blacked out. Bikes was clean, the boots was shining, it was blacked out, man. That was like the first, just like from an aesthetic. Like, I I like a certain look. I like things to look a certain way. Like, I like the fact that I, I'm riding in an all Harley club. I like the uniformity of having the same type of bikes in a club. That's just my personal opinion. I, I like that look, especially going on the highway. But, um... What makes it stand out outside of those those things I just mentioned? Mentioned, you got some guys in there that put down some miles. Like those dudes have really inspired me to get out and push my own limits and see what else is out there. When you see dudes like doing four corners or going up to Alaska or going shipping their bikes, I got bros who ship their bikes to Paris and France and all this other kind of stuff, these other foreign countries and riding over there and in Hawaii and all that stuff. And it's like, man, that's living. That's some serious, that's, that's, that's some serious like riding, some serious biking. And uh, they're always trying to push it to the next level. There's always somebody who's trying to do something that somebody else haven't done. And my saying is in general, you either keep or you exceed the standard. Anything else, is is you know is 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 ridiculous. You know you gotta keep or you exceed the standard. You don't want to get in and water it down. You want to get in and mess it up. You want to bring it to you keep where where it's at, or you bring it high. And I think there's a lot of guys in the club who constantly pushing pushing the ball. And I want to be one of them guys too. No, that's dope, man. So we gotta talk about you being a vlogger, man. You're a moto vlogger. Correct? Yeah, moto vlog. So, um, with your moto vlogs, tell the people what you're actually vlogging. Man, I'm I'm vlogging like the dope. I'm gonna tell you like this, and this is not any knock to nobody else that's out there. I'm the best moto vlogger on the set. Period. I, I'm I'm usually humble about you know saying stuff like this or whatever, but. It's about to be 2025 20, in, in a couple of months. And I, I got to get my practice in. We'll start like, you know, toot my own horn because I really don't do it at all. I, I promise you I don't. But I feel like this is this is that year to really start like, you know, talking my noise. So I'm the best moto vlogger on the set. And possibly one of the best motorcycle content creators that you ever find on YouTube, in my humble opinion, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I talk about, or I vlog about, I don't even, matter of fact, let me go and cut that. Let me, let me, let me, let me kill that, let me scratch that right now. I'm not a moto vlogger. I'm a filmmaker, I'm a documentarian of motorcycle culture, motorcycle riding, motorcycle uh, just influence in general. I create true content centered around those things. I don't want to call myself just a moto vlogger because moto vloggers, you're doing a vlog while you ride. You just, hey, this is me. This is day two. I'm doing blah, blah, blah. Nah, I want to create a film. I want to create experiences for people when they watch it. When you have a moto vlog, in my opinion, you can just, I can watch it on my phone. You know, oh, that, that was cool. What I do is, or what I'm, I'm aiming to do, I'm aiming to keep doing. When you see my video pop up, I want you to be like, man, I can't wait till I get home because I got to put that joke on a TV and, and get ready. Like, that's 
that's the type of level that I'm on and I'm trying to push it to be even higher and higher and higher. Um, but to answer your question more directly, Mr. Lavish, sir, uh, I film content centered around traveling across the United States. I always have an underlying message in each one of my videos on whether it's getting out of your comfort zone, uh, maximizing your time, preparing for your rides, uh, loving on your family and friends while they're here. It's always a message. If you're paying attention to my videos, it's always, I always drop a message in it. Um, but more importantly, just getting out and enjoying our beautiful country. Like, it's some dope, dope, dope stuff out here. Like, I just rode the Tunnel of Trees. I had never heard of it. Somebody was like, oh, you can ride the Tunnel of Trees. I'm like, what's that? Looked it up. Okay, boom. Well, I'm going to take the long way back home and loop around back to Detroit on my way to Detroit. I'm going to stop over here. Now, it's out the way, you know, two and a half hours, three hours out of the way. But that's an experience that I have now that will never be taken away. So I want to show people what's out there, the new experiences that they can have. Because to be honest, you know, I ain't toot my horn. Yeah, I'm toot my horn. I am. Uh, a lot of people didn't go to Canada to visit the gypsies until I did. Just saying. I'm not saying people haven't done it. But when I put it out there for the public to see and how I did it, you know, now more and more people are like, man, hey, how you, is, is it cool? Hey, do you, can you, you got a contact, blah, blah, blah. And what, what was your experience like going over there? Because it's foreign to a lot of people, number one. A lot of people in the, in the bike world, uh, you know, haven't traveled to Canada. So what, what was that experience like? So I was able to guide them through a lot of those experiences and stuff like that. And um, it's, it's, it's just a cool thing to, to see happen in front of you. But uh, yeah, man, that's 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 what it is, man. I, I don't want to get too deep, and I don't want people to think I'm like <laughs> arrogant and nothing like that, cause I'm really not. I'm really a humble dude, no, man. You just gotta speak, and, you know. You just gotta share your, you know, your, your YouTube. I'm stuff. just saying, man. Listen, first of all, before he he probably gonna ask the question or whatever, but just G K on YouTube, J U S T space G space K U E. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. You turn on notifications. Please turn on the notifications because I take my craft extremely serious, like extremely serious. I, I put a lot of hours into editing, into writing, the narration, the whole nine yards, color grading, making it look cinematic, the whole nine yards. So I want to give you guys a, a really, really, really dope experience each time that you see one of my videos. No, that's cool. Now, I noticed on your videos, man, um, that you do a lot of Harley work. Mm -hmm. um, how did that come about, you working with Harley Davidson? Uh, they reached out to me. Uh, they got my inbox, my DMs. They slid in the DMs and uh, invited me out to Daytona one year and you know gave me a vip experience or whatever the case may be and uh i i just kept getting emails and and, and calls and stuff like that and then eventually like it just kind of like grew to me doing more and more things with them and eventually uh getting able to test ride and uh get my first hand experience with the the 24s that just came out uh and they flew me out to Fort Bragg, California, where they were shooting the uh, the content to be released to you know the rest of the world. You know, I had my own experience with it, and I was able to shoot my own content with the bikes. And uh, even to like up to now, the Enthusiast magazine just came out. They did an expose on me, feature article, cover article on the um, Enthusiast. So um, we making we making waves, but. Even though they've reached out to me, whatever, it's not just about me. It's about, you know, what can I do while I'm here that's going to open up doors for the next person. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we get opportunities, but we gatekeep a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's never like my my wave, my get down. Whatever I can do as far as like passing on what type of game, 
um, how you should present your type of content and get noticed and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to do it. You know, we can all win. We can all elevate together. And um, I don't want those opportunities to stop because I did something either A, messed up or B, I didn't help the next person. I didn't pull the next person up with me. Okay. Do you look at yourself and say, wow, I made it with Harley Davidson, the same motorcycle I've been riding for years, is reaching out to me to work with me? Now I ain't made nothing yet. I, I I didn't do I do I well let me let me let me if I'm hearing this correctly do I say to myself I made it because they reached out to me and I'm doing content with them made it in the standpoint of I'm being noticed for my work they're paying attention the big corporation is paying attention to a motorcycle lover who was just doing this as a hobby to the world is reaching out to me to be a part of Harley Davidson. I got you. Um, but still, the same thing is is no. When when you saying you made it, it's a it's a finality to it. So I ain't made it. Um, one, I still got a lot of stuff that I want to do. A lot of stuff that I haven't done. A lot of stuff that uh, you know, even on a financial level, that I can't say. Oh, I've made it. I've made waves for sure. Yes, I can definitely say that. But made it? Nah, I ain't, I ain't made it by any means, not just yet. Okay. Where do you see yourself uh, on the creator side um, on or as a biker in the next year? Whew. On the creator side... Uh, Really elevating, I'm always thinking about elevating the content. Like, what can I do better? What can I do to make the content stand out even more? Each year I write down some goals that I try to hit, whether it's uh, financial goals, whether it's content goals, writing goals, uh, uh, just in just goals in general. I have my goals out and I try to um, hit them. Um, but I want my content to be, 10 times is better this upcoming year than what I put out the year before. And that's me putting in a lot of work behind the scenes, me studying stuff, me buying new equipment, the latest stuff, and, and learning how to use that to the maximum uh, capabilities. Uh, as a writer, I'm just, I'm just getting started. Uh, and I've been a lot of places, but I believe that when you constantly set new writing goals, like you just you're going to check them off. And if you if you're doing it with fidelity, you're going to check it off. And then you always looking for something else, because, like I said, I didn't even know. I didn't even heard of the tunnel of trees and uh, boom. Now that's checked off. I got a, a rolling bucket list right now. It's like a hundred and something like rides that I've either completed it or in the process of doing it. But every time I hear about something and it look cool, I feel like it's worth my time, I add it to my bucket list. So um, next year is either Four Corners or Alaska. I really want to get up to um, Glacier National Park. And I, I, I want to say, just like to riders in general, some of the best riding that you can do is in some of these national parks. And I don't think that we, as a, a biker community, we don't take advantage of that at all. I just did Zion National Park. Amazing. Like some of the, the best views I've ever seen from the seat of my motorcycle. So I want to get up to uh, Grand Tetons in uh, Glacier next year. And I also want to do either the Four Corners or Alaska next year. Okay. That was the first you just said about the National Park. Mm -hmm. I've never heard nobody mention the National Park, <laughs> um, especially on the bike set, man. So that's a that's a first for me to hear. Mm. Um, you talk about the National Park, and maybe um, we should look into it or be introduced to it. Mm -hmm. um, what what's special about the National Park? 
man, you have. So when I say like America is beautiful, a lot of these places that we travel, we quick to go out of the country. Oh, I'm going to go to Brazil or, or Paris or, or wherever. I'm going to Cuba or Jamaica. You have some sites that you will never see anywhere else in the entire world right here in this country. And fortunately, they are protected by the national park system um, with the federal government. And this land is pretty much, or these lands are pretty much uh, cordoned off so that there's no, uh, you really gonna get any service because they don't even allow like uh, phone lines and, and power poles and all that kind of stuff to be uh, put in some of these areas. They want it as natural as possible. And uh, outside of like the paved roads and, uh, you know, amenities that you got to have, like, you know, restrooms in certain spots like that in certain areas, it's a natural part of the country that has not changed for hundreds of thousands of years. And it's going to stay like that as long as, you know, we keep respecting the areas and stuff like that. But I believe that everybody who's a biker, just not only say a biker, just a person in general, should go and check them out because when you get there, you're going to be like, man, this don't even look like the United States, period. It just look like something from another planet. And riding it from the seat of your motorcycle, man, it's just, that's the icing on the cake. Yeah, I can dig it, man. Uh, we, talk about, we talk about riding and being a biker, man. I think we all experienced this at some point in time, man. Uh, on that highway, what has been one of your scariest moments that you experienced? Um... Outside of hitting deer, uh, cars, bro. Like that's probably the, the the scariest thing. Cars and trucks, meaning like we was just riding. Car just now you paint just about to come over. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's stuff like that. I've had 18 wheelers, you know, almost run me off the road, not paying attention. That's probably the the scariest thing like that really just like, you know, bothers me. The lack of people paying attention to bikes on the road. Um, outside of like cars, scariest thing. Uh, when the wind gets real, real, real bad. Like I would take. The wind is probably the worst element for me to ride in. People are like, oh, well, rain. I'll take rain any day over high, high, high winds. The rain just, is just annoying, you know, but if you take your time and, you know, you do your thing, you can make it through. But wind, wind will come through and knock you from the right lane. And you're on a four lane highway. It'll take you from the right lane and bring you all the way to the left lane, four lanes away, just like that. And you have no control over it. You can't do nothing about it. You can try to counter steer and lean one way, but when that wind is whipping that bad, that's 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 very, very, very dangerous. That's something I don't, when they say high cross winds, that's I get kind of nervous when I see that because if you're in an area that has high elevation, the guard rail might be small. You know, I am not trying to get blown over the side of no road. So that's something that uh that I think is 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 scary when you get in some uh some crazy winds. Okay. Outside of riding with your club, um, do you ride with other people? You got to. Okay. You got to. Um one, I love my club, but the club is not, you know, the end all be all as far as me riding my motorcycle. I take time to ride with my friends because my friends can't always ride with me when I'm doing club stuff. You know what I'm saying? So like, um, it's a balance with all of this stuff. Like, me being a club is a is a slice of my life. You know what I'm saying? Me doing other stuff is just slices of of who I am as a person. And uh, matter of fact, I was supposed to be going to ride with uh, some friends to Sturgis, but my time got cut short, so I couldn't go there. So I'm here now, but I've been on plenty of trips with my friends, like, and it's a beautiful thing because it's, it's nothing, uh, we just going to have fun. 
And I think that a lot of times um, in the in the motorcycle world, the fun get taken out of it. You know, whether it's like, well, you got to be here as a man, though. You know what I'm saying? Or we got to go support these people. Or we got to do this or we got to do that. And yada, 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 and yada, yada, yada. And it's just like, I just want to ride my bike and have fun. Like, let's go do some fun stuff. And personally, me as a person, like I say, I don't drink. I don't smoke. Um, so sitting around and, you know, chilling in, in front of the whole host hotel, like, you know, just smoking a, a cigar, that's not fun to me. That's fun to some people, but it's not fun to me. I don't enjoy it. A lot of times like that, I get up on my motorcycle and just go pull up points of interest on my phone and go find something around the city, take some pictures, some video. And uh, I enjoy myself doing a, a cool place to eat. And then I come back and they're like, well, gee, what you just did? Oh, man, I went here. I said, look, but man, why ain't you? Man, look, y'all was sitting in front of the club, the, the, the hotel, smoking cigars and stuff, man. We could have did that. You know, I've, I've invited, of course, I always invite my bros who want to go. Like, if y'all want to come, like, you know, come. But just know I'm on my time. Like, I'm going to do the stuff that I want to do. You feel free to tag along. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but to answer your question, yeah, I make time to do rides with my friends because those are people who I've known, you know, for years. And, uh, and it's even people who I've met along along the travels like they become like super super close like family they come in town we get together we ride or we'll plan a ride like i plan a ride to uh we not i we plan a ride to uh arkansas for bites booze and barbecue festival last year we got an airbnb went out there hung out saw some stuff man just created some some cool memories as just friends we didn't have to be all hard and you know Rah, 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 look at us, you know, it's just what we was going to chill. And I'm not saying everybody just be on some rah, rah stuff, but you get what I'm saying. No, I get it. Man, I know that, you know, with your journey going all over the place, um, posting all types of videos and stuff over social media, a lot of people want to ride with you. Mm -hmm. When it comes down to riding with new people. Everybody can't go. Okay. I'm going gonna, gonna, <laughs> gonna to cut y'all right there. Sorry, people, but everybody can't go, dog. Like. And it's, not, it's nothing, you know, like it's not a personal thing. I want people to understand that it's not personal. Everybody can't go. And I'm I'm, I'm going to trademark that too. I'm telling you right now. You're going to hear it first. I'm trademarking that. Everybody can't go. I got a video. He going to put the link in the description. Everybody can't go. Uh, it's nothing personal. It's more along the lines of I've become accustomed to riding a certain way. There's only a handful of people who I trust to ride that kind of way as well. So for me, everybody can't go. You know, these new people or people who see me like, oh my God, like I want to ride with GQ. Like he's going all these places. But you don't understand like some of them, some of them days, like even like yesterday, leaving Milwaukee, going all the way up and around and coming here, that was 13, 14 hours. Like quick. And people just like, I had, I, I literally, had one of my father, my IG followers, he, he said, man, how long, how early did you leave? Because we got back home like nine o'clock and we left around nine. I'm like, I left about six, but you know, I know how to make it do what it do when I'm on that road to make up my time. I'm not playing around at gas stations. I'm gassing and going. I'm not really eating too much. I'm drinking my water and I'm keeping this train moving. Uh, I know how to Designate time to, to pull off and take a picture, uh, hit a few spots along the way and keep the thing moving so I can get to my destination in a, a decent amount of time. But a lot of times people, they see it, but they don't see the, the, the work that you got to put in to make stuff like that happen. Riding motorcycles is work. It's fun work, but it's fun. Sometimes you just like, man, I want to take a break. But then you look at that time and like, well, the sun is about to drop in about three hours, so I need to get back to it. Or some people may say, man, well, I'm really hungry. I want to, you know, I want to sit down and eat. We ain't got the time to sit down and eat. So what do you do? Everybody can't go. So if you want to come, just know that. And if you invite yourself on somebody's ride, be man enough or woman enough to know like it's not your ride. They're not, they shouldn't, or you shouldn't pressure them. 
to change what they're going to do to accommodate you. Y'all should have that type of conversation beforehand, number one. And once you you understand what it is, how fast y'all going, the type of stops and breaks and things that y'all going to be doing, you know, don't try to change it or deviate from it once you're on the ride because people will take over a ride. And I, mm, I, I'm not with that right now. I would rather you say, like, look, I want to take a ride with you. I want to go, I don't know, Timbuktu. Timbuktu is like 10 hours away. All right, cool. Have, it, have you ever rode X amount of miles before? Nah, I'm like, all right. So I, I question them and, you know, get a gauge of what they can do and what they can't do. And it's day ride, I'll ride, day ride. You know, we can take a break. I'm not tripping on, you know, us taking extended time at the gas stops or whatnot because I'm riding a ride. We didn't talk about this already. But if you just like, well, I want to come with you, everybody can go. Straight up. Now, what's, what's some, um, and this is going to be focused um, to the people that's trying to learn something. Um, that's looking at what you're talking about, looking at this video, looking at this interview, trying to pick up some information, man. What is your safety tips, man, preparing yourself uh, to get on the highway? Uh, first of all, just in general, you got to have good health. Like, if your health is not in order, you know, your, your blood pressure high, you, you out of shape, like riding motorcycles, like, in general, you got to have your health in good order. You know, it's it's not good when you have a medical emergency on the road, more riding a motorcycle. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but safety tips in general, health number one. Make sure your health good. You can't sit up there. Oh, I just had, you know, brain surgery two weeks ago, and you expecting to go ride? You know. 30 hours across the country. Nah, man, that's not cool. Don't even, like, play yourself like that. No no matter how bad you want to ride, like, make sure your health is in order. Um, two, make sure your bike is in order. And we ain't just talking about just changing oil. Make sure, check them tires. Check the, the dates on the tires. I seen one dude actually spray paint his tires. No, dead serious because he ain't want nobody to know he had old tires. Oh, and he's, like, literally spray painting the tires. And the tire went flat on on a on a road like they was just they were dry right. Uh, making sure your your whole bike is is looked over, take care of from your charging system because that's probably the the main thing that'll strand you between that state and that that uh, regulator. That'll be probably the the first thing. Um, of course, your oils. If you got hydraulic uh, clutches and um, brakes and stuff like that, making sure you, you're flushing that because moisture accumulating that. And you if it's hot, you will lose the ability to like shift and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So getting rid of getting, I don't say get rid of that, but like flushing that out, your brake pads um, and checking to make sure that your bike is structurally sound. When I say that, you got dudes who, who get on a ride. And the next thing you know, they coming back home without a muffler because they ain't checked to make sure all of the bike was was buttoned down tight. Whether well, that's your mufflers, your your heat shields, um, certain things on your bike. Like just go back every once in a while and just tighten some stuff up and just, you know, check on stuff, feel stuff. And that's why I like to wash my bike a lot because I get to feel on it and see what's loose and what's what's not where it need to be. Uh Safety tip, I guess number three, is uh preparing for the worst. Like, what's the worst case scenario that'll happen when I'm on the road? And I break down. Okay, do you have the things that you're gonna need to do to get you off the road? So if you get a flat, do you have a tire patch kit? Can you plug a tire? Do you have an air compressor? If your battery uh just is dead or it's too cold, because if you don't have enough cold cranking amps, your uh your bike won't start. That happened to me before, but I had my jump box, was able to put it on there and crank the bike up. Uh little stuff like rain gear, heated gear, uh just the basics, you know, making sure you have that stuff 
the, the just in case. If it rains, what happens? If it gets too cold, what happens? If it's just a little chilly, what do I do? I'll keep a hoodie on my uh, my bike. I don't know where I'm going. It might, the, the temperature may say 85 degrees, but I didn't realize that at nighttime now it get 50. You know? So what, what am I doing? Um, number four. Safety tip number four. Making sure that uh you got your money right in a sense. Like, can you call somebody? If you if you just happen to uh need a tow, do you have a AAA or any type of towing assistance that's gonna help you through your insurance? Um, can you pay for a breakdown? Do you have an extended um, service plan that'll be able to, you know, take care of any breakdowns and stuff like that, you know? Um, and other than that, just planning. Planning the route, planning for the worst, and um, expecting the best. All right, that's cool. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I think because uh, I want to leave stuff for down the road, <laughs> I, I want to leave stuff because I don't think that this will be our last time uh, oh, no doubt. In, front of, in front of this camera um, talking and chatting, man. But what I will ask is if you had anything that you want to share to the viewers that's watching it. Um, outside of shamelessly plugging myself, um, go visit www.peacearmyworldwide.com. Um, Unleash the Peace Run Part 2. It will be happening next year, Memorial Day weekend, um, down in Louisiana, Slidell, Louisiana, at Mike Bruno's North Shore Harley Davidson. Come check us out. Good times, good food, good fun, good people. Uh, Subscribe to the channel. I'm not, I'm, let me, re, I mean, we're going to rewind that. If you want to see good motorcycle content, then subscribe to the channel. I don't want you to subscribe because my man, you know, lavish behind the camera and we be talking about this stuff, you know what I'm saying? But if you want to see really good motorcycle content and you like it, I want you to go watch you know, maybe two, three videos. If you like it, then subscribe to the channel, right? And I promise you, like, you will be, uh, you won't regret it. You know what I'm saying? So visit www.peacearmyworldwide.com. Check me out on Instagram at justgqjustgkue and on YouTube, J-U-S-T space G space K-U-E. I promise you won't regret it. Regret it. Man, you know what I just thought about, man? One day. I asked everybody this, man. I got to put this in there, man. Uh, it's a couple of things. <coughs> man. Sidebar, man. On the bike set, man, what's what's a couple of the biggest lies you done heard, man? Lies ab about about what on the bike set? Anything, man. When it come down to it, man. When you get guys that come around and they huddle, man. The biggest lies that you constantly hear, man. It could be anything, man. Mm. Biggest lies. Yeah, man. You know, you get gas. Oh, man, I've been riding my bike this long. I got the fastest bike. Oh. Uh, I've been, yeah, you know. What's no, <laughs> no, man. So the biggest lies, I, and I don't want to say it's anything that somebody has necessarily said. It's more along the lines of people saying or pr putting out who they claim to be. Like, I know people who, who get on a bike set, who got on a bike set, and then they turn into a totally different person. It's like, bro, that's not you, dog. Like, you ain't, you not that person. I know you in real life. You know what I'm saying? That's probably like the biggest thing, like the pretenders. And one thing that I enjoy about being myself, like, I don't change for nobody. Like, I'm not trying to change for nobody. I'm the same person that you see in person, same person you see at home, chilling, or whatever the case may be. Um, but that's probably the biggest thing is people claiming to be somebody who they not. Um, second, is people lying about just like miles. Like, I don't understand why, like if you haven't done it, like you haven't done it. Like I, I know people who will come over and like interject themselves in a conversation and you can tell by the time the conversation is over, like, that dude ain't do that. 
Like, I don't, I don't understand. Like, you ain't got to lie to kick it. Like, it's not that serious, bro. Like, everybody can't do certain things, and it's okay. You do it whenever you can. Oh, man, so you heard people lying about Miles, man. Yeah. You know for a fact. I know, man, I know for a fact, man. I People talking about the, the type of uh, bikes they own and stuff like that. Yeah, I got a, you know, woo, woo, woo in the house. And I'm like, okay. Like, you, I don't think you know I'm right here, but I know you. You know what I'm saying? But, no, it's all good, man. It, like, certain people going to gravitate to certain people in the bike world, period. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I, I tend to gravitate to the, to the, the, a certain type of individuals on the bike set. Usually those individuals are great human beings in general. Yeah. They're going to look out for other people. They're going to ride their motorcycle and they're not with no BS. And that's why I usually find myself around. I don't know how it happens. Like the laws of the universe, the, the laws of attraction just, just put those type of people together, man, because... They got some. They got some real busters out here, <laughs> for real. No, I can dig it, man. And then, uh, <laughs> the last, the last thing, man, because I'm, I'm always, I'm a big advocate, a big supporter of the movement with these women mm -hmm. and the way that these women are out here riding these motorcycles, man. Mm -hmm. um, what's your outlook, view, take, opinion on these female riders, man? That's out here. Um, doing a damn thing, man. Riding, getting these miles, you know, having dope bikes and all of that. I think that whatever makes an individual happy, I can support it. And it's not, that's not just a woman thing. Like, that's just a human thing. Whatever makes that person happy if these women getting out here and getting on these bikes and they enjoying themselves i'm for it like that makes me happy knowing that they're doing something that's making them happy like i like to see people do stuff and and, and lean into things that they didn't do before and it makes them happy i like to see people being happy that's the joy aspect of that peace love and joy that i talked about you know what i'm saying so they getting it like these girls just went from Atlanta to uh, LA to Cali. Some of them had never been, but they did it and it made them happy. And I'm just like, man, I'm I'm happy because they happy because they did something that they never thought that they was gonna do. Like, how could you not root for people who are, are doing something that they never thought they would be doing, or experiencing something that they never experienced before, or uh, you know just breaking barriers that never been broken before like you gotta like root for those kind of people and i think we got a problem a real and I'm, I'm 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 talking directly to the camera like we really got a problem as a biker community of not celebrating people who deserve to be celebrated no matter how small or how big give people flowers like that's a uh uh that's the the smallest thing that you can do is to acknowledge somebody you don't know how small that acknowledgement is to that person, how big it'll make them feel. You know what I'm saying? So, like, when those girls went out there to L.A., my club recognized them. You know what I'm saying? Y'all did that, gave them T-shirts, all that kind of stuff, man. That's a good feeling. When people out here doing stuff on a bike set or supporting a bike set or whatever, it's nothing to just walk up to them and be like, man, I see you. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to go real deep. I see you. I see what you're doing. I notice what you're doing. Like, I like that. Keep doing it. You know what I'm saying? It's too much. Too much people got. I don't see too much people. Let me. I'm speaking in, in Ebonics now. Too many people got an ego problem. And they're scared. I don't see even scared. They just. Their pride is too big to acknowledge somebody else. And I don't know if they think it's going to take away from what they doing. But. Letting people know that you appreciate them, that you see them, that, you know what I'm saying, you're encouraging them. I think it's like the, the biggest thing that's lacking in the biker community today. Okay, that's cool. 